Hey guys, this is Jen from Scan and Cut Canvas and Scallop on Facebook. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go through a couple of different applications that you can do uh, with these metal tumblers, not plastic, metal. Okay, um, and I want to show you some that I have already done. Okay, this one I did a long, long time ago. Okay, you see, maybe if I focus it. Okay, you see this, it's still in perfect condition. All right? Mm-hmm. There's the hundred wishes and dragonflies. That's because this is sandblasted. So I sandblast this and then I paint it. Okay? And this has been through the wash, I can't tell you how many times, but tons of times. And it is still perfect. Okay? This is a very good way to permanently apply uh, names, effects, whatever you want to these tumblers, okay? But again, it requires sandblast etching. And then you paint it. And a lot of people use Peebo paint. Um, I experimented and I actually utilized black spray paint. And it worked. But you have to understand, it can create quite a mess at first. Because as it dries, it can be really sticky. And can just make an awful, awful mess. So the Peebo paint works really well too. Okay, so that's the spray painted one. Let me get that. Let me set it over here. These are the ones that we're going to do. These. And then that, this pink Yeti. This pink Yeti right here we're going to do. And this, one of my new blue corksicles. Okay. This one has um, just regular adhesive vinyl on it. Um, this is an older Oracal 651. And looky, it peels off. This is what happens with adhesive vinyl. It peels, okay? So I left this on here um, to show you that it peels and then it can create kind of an ugly mess. Uh, that you have to go through and remove, okay? This side isn't so bad because I didn't go after this side. Um, this is stuck really, really well, but this side didn't. It's just a chance you take anytime you use adhesive. Um, I don't have any of my HTV ones. Um, my mom took my Lakota one and then my other uh, hot pink one that I have of this one is actually in the wash right now. Um, so that's why I don't have any of those. But I'll show you what those look like. And um, we are going to actually use a hair dryer to apply the HTV. And that is what I'm going to use for all of these. Um, because it's the permanent way to quickly do it. Uh, the sandblasting can take a while uh, to set up if you're not already out blasting a bunch of different stuff. Okay. Um, and with these, these are kind of thinner walled ones. Um, they're not as thick as this. So this might be something I wouldn't want to etch too deeply might go right through the dang thing and end up with a sprinkling can. All right. Um, and then the corksicle, I have that hot pink that I absolutely love on this. Um, and then my Yeti. I don't want to sandblast because I don't want to ruin the warranty on it. Okay. So let's get busy. And a quick tip. If you, you've seen the junk that was all over this, all that sticky residue that's left over. So you're not fighting with it and like me, I refuse to use Goo Gone unless it is absolutely necessary. That leaves such a nasty greasy residue that sometimes it is hard to get off and can actually create more problems than that nasty sticky stuff. What I do, and you see I just built a regular old cardboard box that I had laying around. Set your cup down, take a old paper towel, soak it with Windex. Lay it over what needs to be removed. Go do your files. Go get your vinyl ready. Go get that stuff done. When you're ready, come back over here. Pull it off. Wipe it around. Try to get most of it off. Then take your hard scraper and start to scrape. All that junk will start to come off. Okay, actually really easily. And you see it's what's left is coming 
off on my edge of my blade there, or edge of my scraper, okay? Pop it out. Okay, do a pass. I do a pass with the dry part, because what that does is then that collects. Sorry, I hope if you guys could see, huh? Sorry about that. Okay. Now, all that's collected there tells me that I need to go back in, put some more Windex down, and go after that part. But you see how much was technically removed by just soaking it with Windex. Let me grab my, or window cleaner. I shouldn't promote a product, I guess, because this probably isn't Windex. I'm too cheap to buy the name brand stuff. A window cleaner that's blue. Okay, and you just rub. Okay. So it doesn't take too awful long to remove all of that nasty stuff that was on there. Set my angle or set my blade on a hard angle, pretty much 90 degrees. And go after what I can see. Do a final wipe of all the stuff that was there. Take my dry piece, go over it, and there's absolutely nothing left. So now that's ready for the new HTV that I'm going to put on it. I'm going to, oh, yep, I see a little bit right there. Okay. Also, make sure you do not touch where you're going to apply this. You don't want any of your finger oils, your hand oils on there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to set that up. Let that dry off naturally as I go and fiddle. Okay. Here's the pink on the corksicle. And what I would recommend to you, um, if you're just using like a hair dryer or the heat gun, and you don't have a heat press. Use one single layer of HTV. Do not try to stack them up. <clears throat> um, you're going to be asking for pretty much an impossibility, okay? Um, with the hair dryer, again, I have my 1875 watt hair dryer. Um, I have my uh, leather gloves. I have a hard edge scraper. I have HTV cut and placed in no special way. I do not use a wrapper. I don't use a cone. I don't use blah, 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 nothing. I cut it straight, okay? What I do is I utilize heat and I utilize positioning to help me lay these letters correctly, all right? Um, what I've told people in class is that anytime you use that wrapper effect and things like that, you are actually functionally changing the size of the letters. I don't like that. So that is why I refrain from using it. Everybody else can go ahead and use it if they like. Um, that's just the reason that I don't. Okay, so what I do is I have this set on the hot. And I'm going to crank this bad boy up to high. Okay. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go over it and I'm going to apply heat to the whole thing. And you will see me. I will start on one side and I will work my way across. First we're going to heat it and I'm going to apply just kind of like contact pressure. You're not going to see me smooth it like this. No, no, no. What you're asking for is slide. We don't want that slide. We want contact, lift, contact, lift, contact, lift. You may see me use my finger to smooth it like this. That is without hardly any pressure. What I'm doing is I'm actually following the uh, word or basically the line of the HTV. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to, um, uh oh, my son just got home so I knew my dog was going to take off barking. But I'm going to actually follow the words um, in the letters and what I really want to try to do is I want to try to prematurely pull the actual um, paper off of here and let some of the letters flop if I can. I may not be able to but I really want to try because I want to show you how to handle that. Um, let's say 
you go to pull all of this off and oh my god you have some floppies or something happens you know a month down the road and you notice some floppies I want to show you how to safely handle that so let's go through um, if you hear my son come in it's because he doesn't know that I'm uh, recording so you may get a hey mom all right let's go so I'm going to start to heat this up and this this hair dryer gets really really hot Again, the reason that I'm using a hair dryer is because when I caught down in Georgia, I went down there and even though my truck was packed to the hilt, uh, I forgot my heat gun. And I was sitting in my room bored to death. And I was like, man, I want to make something. I had bought my very first pork sickle down at LEJ's Little Shop. Oh my God, I fell in love with so many things down there and so many people. There's absolutely beautiful people in every city that I went to. And I will never forget it. But um, I bought my first one there and I was like, you know what, I want to decorate it. Well, didn't have a heat gun. So of course I go to Walmart. No heat guns, no nothing. Actually, their craft department was uh, less than sterling. So I asked someone, you guys got a Hobby Lobby or something around here? And they looked at me like I was French. So I thought, what am I going to do? Well, I looked down and I saw my hair dryer sitting there. I thought, yep, I'm going to give that sucker a go. So I went back to Walmart, got a pair of gloves, and I started. And lo and behold, it worked. And it worked really, really well. That's really important for you guys that may be in the same boat. You may not have a heat gun. You may not have a heat press with a cup attachment. But you may have a Dollar General. And that Dollar General sells hair dryers. Because I'm telling you what, it does not matter where you live. I live way out in the boondocks. Well, about five miles from here, there is a little tiny store that had absolutely nothing in it, but it sits on State Route 23. They put a Dollar General in there, so we call that the mall. Well, evidently that mall is so important to all of us that live out here in the middle of nowhere that they actually put a little grocery store inside of that Dollar General. It's like one of the only ones in the United States that has one, and it's really nice. But if you're ever doing this or want to do it and you can't or you don't have anything, go to your local store and just pick up a hair dryer. And try to get one that's really has a lot of wattage because that'll help that heat. Okay, so you see I've started on this end and I'm starting to kind of work my way over, just gently pressing, working in this direction. Not pressing hard at all, just the contact pressure. You see my S is floating in the air. You can see it. You can actually see that shadow behind it. No shadow, not you. My dog, that's her name. So even though I may want to work on that S, I don't. I got to start all the way down here and work my way over. And that's important because if I tack that S down right here, all these may need to move over a little bit. So if that S is stuck, that's going to create a wrinkle. So that's why I always work in one direction. And why I'm not using really firm pressure right now is this is also telling me if it's getting hot enough. Now, do you see a shadow anymore? No. That means it's starting to stick. That heat is getting good and good and hot. Okay, so let me come up here and do the same thing this way. This is so much fun to do because you can take your regular cups, metal cups, or ceramic, never glass. Glass 
can explode. Not saying it will, but it holds the potential to explode. So please do not ever try to apply HTV to glass or plastic because of the high heat that it requires. If you want to apply something that you don't really want to use adhesive because it tends to peel, then use the adhesive as a stencil and paint it. The only thing I like using adhesive vinyl on is window stickers. I'm not a big fan of it on anything else because it feels. Okay, so sorry I left this go so long, but I wanted you to actually see me do the full tack down, okay? Now I can actually see a shadow right there. I actually want to leave that there because that's the flipper that I want, okay? I'm going to have to take this off because me trying to work in gloves is like oh, making me try to pick up, woo, that's hot, trying to pick up needles with mittens on. Okay, so now we're at the peel part. This you want to do, start, oh good, my F's also flipping. Start at one side and work your way over to the next. Go slow because if one flakes like right there you do not want to rip nor do you want to stretch it and I'm not panicking I'm actually relishing all of these little flippers okay I need to see nope that flips too much I can't have that I don't want the whole word coming off because I don't want to ruin it so I'm going to continue to work on the help and that is hot another thing I want to tell you is because these are made of metal that is actually an excellent, excellent thing for us utilizing HTV. Because it's retaining that heat, it is actually activating that adhesive that is on the back. Okay. However, you do not want to get it so hot that you melt your HTV. Okay. Um, I'm trying to knock out a bunch of things. Um, let me keep working on this, and I will come back. One more to the part we're going to peel. Okay, let's have us a look-see. We got help all the way down. Okay, so the C and the J, which is perfect. Okay, so I have, and you know what? Keep these, okay? This is actually your transfer tape, your heat safe transfer tape, guys. So I know some people are like, oh, don't be a hoarder. Heck, you want to hoard this stuff. So your big sheets of t-shirt transfers that you do, keep them. You can reuse them for stuff like this, okay? Watch when I hit this with some air. See how they flick and flip out of the way? Watch when I hit it on high. Oh, lordy. Oh no, well, and this one's supposed to come up, but it's starting to pack down. Dang it. But you see what can happen. Okay, you can get that sucker all out of sorts. That one will do it if I keep messing with it, which I want to. Come on, I know you want to come up. Alright. Well, anyways, you see this. What I want to try to do is I want to try to use my blow dryer. And I want to try to push it in the direction where it's going to lay down. Okay? So what direction would that be? And this light, sorry, hang on. I'm going to try to fix this light so it's not such a glare, but you can still see. Let me try to pick it up. Would that help? I'm out in the little house, and it's terrible lighting out here. Well, if I take my finger and I smooth it, aha, going this direction... So that's the direction that I want to put my air. I'm going to use my pick to reposition it if I need to, to help reshape it if I need to. Okay. So right now I'm going to just put that down. There we go. 
I've got it on low right now. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Okay. I got it on low. Let me trick this to high. There. Set it down, lift it up, and press. Now, I can really set it on there. Set it down, lift it up. Now I'm using really firm pressure right under my thumb. Okay, so let me shut that off. Now, let me focus this. Nice way to cameraman. Okay, so now there is no more lift there. I can flick it. Okay, and that's not an easy flick. That's a pretty hard flick. Okay, and it doesn't move. Now I got to go after this guy. Again, the same thing. Just straight down. Remove. Straight down. And you continue to do that until it holds its tack. Okay? At first, start off with gentle pressure so you don't actually accidentally slip. You don't want to mess up that HTV. You don't want to bend it, stretch it, tear it, none of that. Okay? It looks like my little F might get a little funky there. Uh, this font is uh, Fratello Nick by Debbie Cimentelli, the entire font, and I made it a little thicker. Because sometimes when you cut fonts, you know they'll cut real, real thin. Real, real thin fonts don't hold up well when you're cutting them and using them. In vinyl. All right, so I'm going to finish up with this. I don't want you to sit here and look at the end of a hair dryer. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go in and do the final heat and press. And I'm going to start here. I'm going to heat up this end, and everything that fits under my palm, I am going to heat it up, and I'm going to press hard and hold. Okay? For all of you. Please understand, I do not know what the temperature is coming out of the end of your hair dryer. I do not know how long you hold your hair dryer on your tumbler. I do not know what your tumbler is made out of. I do not know what HTV you are using. I do not know what coating is on your tumbler. Therefore, how long, how high, whatever. I cannot tell you. What you will need to do is, after I am done, I'm going to go through here and I am going to go after the edges of all of these letters like a boss. Okay? If they start to, and you'll see, right now I'm actually doing it. I am not being nice. You can hear, I am digging. You can hear my finger hitting it. Okay? This is before I go for the final press. Okay? That's what you're going to do. You may not want to be as vigorous as I am. You may want to gently come in here because if it's going to rip, it's going to rip. Okay? You may want to come in here and do something like this. But I did that kind of for an effect to show you what you want to do. That is the only way you're going to figure out if you've done it right. Also, carefully look at it. You will see the shadowing. Okay? If you see shadows that lie underneath these letters, and you, you see what I mean. Okay, you cannot see any shadowing under any of those letters. The shadowing is that letter, that word, that piece of HTV letting go of that cup. You do not want that, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish. So 
I can't hold anymore because it's burning my skin. Through the leather glove. And I am using great force. You can do this as many times as you think you need. I'm always keeping hot air blowing on this tumbler. So it's always being heated. If you have an outlier, like that little piece of the key tends to hang out of that whole design, you can go after that separately and independently if you want. Okay? Alright. So there, it took about 10 minutes for this entire thing to happen. If I was making this without... Oh, see the little spot right there? If I was making this without doing a video... It would take me probably around well, five to seven minutes, depending on how well the HTV sticks or what heat the HTV calls for to be heated up to. I know that this pink HTV has a really low heat. Uh, this is one that I've gotten away with using a 260 degree heat. So it's just a really low heat type of vinyl. Okay, so I think I may go through and keep doing it a little bit and shoot it from all sides. But understand, this is going to remain hot for quite a while. Okay, just because it, this is a corksicle, so it's one of those really good quality um, way too high priced tumblers but you know when you walk into a store and you really like the little store shopkeeper and you talk for four hours you end up buying something and this was one of the things that I got okay so there is my little corksicle now the next one I want to try is this Yeti now this has a really really weird textured outer coating. Um, I don't know if I can get in here enough to show you what it looks like. Hang on, I'll try. Yeah, you see that texture on it? It's really weird. So, I may have my hands full trying to get something to stick to this, but I'm going to try it. And we shall see what we get. Okay. Okay, so we're getting ready to do this little guy. I'm going to actually come in here and give it a clean with the alcohol swab. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to go grab my file and we're going to get ready. Okay guys, I'm back. I have the file for this one. What you need to understand and be careful of is pay attention to the heat, time, and pressure that your HTV that you are using requires. If it is a higher heat, higher pressure, higher temperature, or higher press time, I should say, then you may not want to do it this way. Actually, you don't want to do it this way because it's probably not gonna adhere properly. You will need to use a heat press, okay? Um, like a lot of the, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the printed vinyls, uh, they have the really pretty decorations on them. Those require a very high heat. One of them that I have is a 350 degree, 30 second press under high pressure. I'm not going to be able to manually achieve all of that. Okay, I understand that. Therefore, I won't use HTV like that. But these, normally these single colors, um, the regular HTVs, the glitter, because you've seen the glitter in the other video, those will work. Okay. All right, so let's get this guy and get him set up. I'm going to be tackling this one, actually utilizing a heat gun for those that have not seen the heat gun video on the other one. Okay, so now I have my final one I'm going to do on video here because we're actually going to use the heat gun. 
if for those of you that have not watched the other heat gun video figured I put all these in the same video alright so now I have some brown glitter vinyl it is very important that you understand the heat the pressure and the time that your uh, HTV requires most printed vinyls uh, the vinyls with all those cool decorations on them those HTV vinyls may require too high of a heat too firm of a pressure and too long of a time to be successfully done with either the heat gun or the blow dryer so it's really important that you understand that and know what all of your HTV requires in that aspect um, I know that like my stalls printable um, is usually it's it's a higher heat uh, I do know one of them requires a heat of like 350 for 30 seconds at high pressure I can't achieve that with this okay so I know that that knocks those out of the park if I want to do that I will need a heat press to do that okay but if I'm in a pinch and I want to rock out some tumblers using HTV and I have one of these or I have a hair dryer I need to understand that I can utilize most glitter vinyl and most of this um, regular vinyl like this okay so note that before you start all right and I'm going to start on one side starting to heat I'm going to tack down and yes I do have a piece of old uh, carrier sheet so that this doesn't slide and again I am not sure if this will even stick to this because it does have such an odd coating on it but we'll try This is a brown glitter vinyl I got from uh, sewingmachine.com when I visited them in person when I did my LEJ Georgia class. It was so nice to be able to finally meet those guys. If you can, if you are around anywhere around uh, Georgia, I do not recommend driving in Atlanta, but you kind of have to go there. They have some pretty awesome vinyl. And they ha do have the glitter vinyl that you can glitter over. That's the Chemica vinyl. And so far, that is the only vinyl that you can glitter over. that is not fully encapsulated. Okay, now I'm going to put a lot of pressure on this. And I'm not touching the cup right now. I'm just running this hot air over it. Man, that's good and hot. Tried to peel the price tag off the paper and that ain't happening, so I'm probably going to set that on fire. Just add some thrills to my day. So you see, this is what I'm doing. I'm just going through and doing the exact same thing. I'm going to go out to the barn and find my heat gun so I can check the differences in the temperatures between the heat gun and the actual uh, hair dryer. See what the differences are. And I love the colors of brown and pink together. So that's why I decided to use brown glitter vinyl. I'm not necessarily a blingy person. Those of you that have met me in person know 
if you catch me not teaching, I do not wear any jewelry. I don't wear any makeup. I'm a plain Jane kind of person. Or you can call me lazy, whatever you want. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to keep doing this, and then we'll come back at the end. Okay, this is done. Turned out pretty good. There's just some thin spots there that were cut in the vinyl, so it's supposed to look like that. But there it is. Okay, um, same exact application process this only with this you can actually rub as you go which can wear these tips out and you see this one is really really worn okay you can see how grody that looks but same exact process um, I did wanna I have a heat gun here so we're gonna check let's actually take a look at what this temperature is Okay, so this has been sitting here for a little while. Oh, hang on. Okay, so right now that's sitting at 126 degrees. And that's been sitting there. Okay. Um, and I'm outside and the ambient temperature is probably around, I would say, let's see, what's my phone say? 66 degrees. Okay. So that's really hot. Let's check this. See if it'll read what's coming out. No, it doesn't want to read. Well, maybe if I point it in there. So it's going, oh God, yeah, it helps you to see, huh? Okay, so we're at 135, 6, 145, so it's still climbing. I'm going to bake this little sucker. There we go. So you can see that is well above 200 and still climbing. Still going. Oops. Me and my shake and bake hands. Come on. All right, so you can see that that's going way, way up there. Let me grab my hair dryer. Okay, I have out ye old hair dryer. Now I'm going to try to do this without blowing the camera away in myself. Without burning my fingers off. So we're at 298, three, ooh, 310. I will tell you, most of my HTV I do at 300. Not 300, I'm sorry. Between 310 and 315. So we're already at 3, there was a 340 there for a minute. We're up to 350. Okay, you can see how hot. That's 361. 364. Okay, so that gets pretty hot. This one, I uh, let's try to do that again. But no, I'll, I'll leave that one. But the heat, the heat gun, the heat embossing gun, that one gets pretty hot. The hair dryer, you see, 327. Uh, it was all the way up to 360 at one point, 360 some. So it does kick out quite a bit of heat. Either one of those. Um, it's just your pressure and your time. Okay, and then maintaining that heat all the way across your design. All right guys, if you have any questions, come and find me over at Scan and Cut Canvas and Scal Help on Facebook. And please remember, these are on the fly videos to be used as you need them, not necessarily a full education video. Thanks.